So levelling up is one of those huge policies that the government is really setting its sights on in terms of how it's going to deliver for people up and down the country. But what does levelling up mean? And does it mean projects in the Midlands and the North at the expense of areas that are quite productive right now. One of those productive areas that was an opportunity generation project that was started several governments ago yet seems to maybe uh, be hitting some buffers under this government is something called the Oxford Cambridge Arc. An innovative idea to link up two of the most innovative and growth centred cities in the United Kingdom. Well, exactly where is that project now? I'm delighted that I can be joined now by uh, Bev Hindle, who is the director of the Oxford Cambridge Arc Leadership Group. Uh, welcome to the programme, Bev. I, I suppose the first question is, how would you describe what the Oxford Cambridge Arc is to those who haven't heard of it? The Arc is meant to represent a regional collaboration. So the area between Oxfordshire and Cambridgeshire, including Northamptonshire, uh, the former Bedfordshire, Milton Keynes and Buckinghamshire, is that part of the country that has the greatest, if you like, uh, uh, collection and, and intensive uh, location of, of assets dedicated to innovation and, and driving smart and intelligent growth, particularly around life sciences, uh, energy, aviation, space, and mobility. So it's about how can those places, along with the private sector, work together to make better use of that growth uh, for better outcomes for communities in the future. rowing back from some of its plans with regard to linking up, creating this opportunity area, this arc between Oxford and Cambridge. There's been a lot of local opposition to plans for new roads, potentially new railways, and perhaps most perniciously in the views of some local people, more houses. Yeah, that's been a constant problem. And in and, and, and the mixed messages and the inability to be clear with the public that, look, this is an area of the country that is growing rapidly and it's continuing to grow and has grown for some time. Uh, there was never a million homes target, but there are a lot of homes being planned and being built. And so we need to be able to make sure that we take advantage of that to create better circumstances and better outcomes for our communities. And the reality is because of the changes of government, changes of prime minister, uh, COVID, post-Brexit, many different issues that have come to be priorities for the government. They've lost attention and focus on the fact that whilst levelling up is a significant uh, policy for the country, absolutely right, um, it shouldn't be levelling down. And the reality is you need this region to be successful to continue to support levelling up ambition. And by the way, many parts of this arc do not enjoy the prosperity of other parts of the arc. So there are areas that do need investment here and levelling up here. So in, in our view, the government needs to continue to commit to here. It doesn't mean it has to be solely public funded. There's a lot, a significant amount of private investment going into this area. Um, but the government needs to continue to support it. As for growth, well, here's one of the problems. I think the general language that most people uses that growth can be bad, that more houses isn't good. But the reality is this area is growing. And if we do not invest in infrastructure, if we do not invest in the communities and the environment, I mean, one of our fundamental core beliefs as a group is, look, if we're doubling the economy in 30 years, we should be doubling the environmental improvements over that time as well. If we do not work in collaboration, if we do not have government support for that, then that's going to be even more difficult to manage. And our local authorities are struggling to be able to do that locally by themselves without government support. Now, it's a double-edged sword. What we don't want is a top-down solution that's given to us. I think that's part of the problem in the past. I think the public has reacted to that in a negative way. So can we find the sweet spot where there is local collaboration that's supported uh, in a pan-regional partnership is the, is the latest term the government uses, similar to Western Gateway, Midlands Engine, Thames Estuary. Will government support a collection of, of, of local leadership uh, and leaders working together to be able to make the best of that plan growth, as opposed to constantly trying to react or catch up? And, and, and even worse still, that the infrastructure and the deficit of investment gets worse for this part of the country. That, that's not in the country's interest, and it certainly is not in the community's interest across the arc. I suppose one of the issues of previous years when it comes to some 
uh, small but potentially quite loud local groups being very, very vociferously against this project of development, potentially in a new context, in the context in which the country now finds itself with potentially a recession in the next year, sky-high inflation, the economy and the cost of living at the forefront of everyone's minds, does that change the dial when it comes to talking about projects that could well produce economic growth for the country as a whole? I think it probably creates a more attention and more focus on the need for strong economic growth, but I don't think that means growth at any cost. I think there is a lot of legitimacy to local concerns that in the past perhaps growth has not been invested in, so that communities have actually suffered. Growth has happened too fast without the investment catching up. In fact, many of our communities are still waiting for major pieces of infrastructure investment, even East-West Rail, which was more or less as a given as a national piece of infrastructure, still remains part of it, of that, of that East West connectivity still remains uh, unfunded. And so I think to a certain extent, yes, the, the current reality uh, post, post Brexit and post COVID that the economy needs particular attention is right. What our proposition is, but it can be done well. Growth, economic growth can be clean and green and we can support that innovation growth here probably better than anywhere, possibly in the planet, but certainly in the country where we should be able to take advantage of that innovation and entrepreneurial spirit to do the right thing through growth so that actually communities can benefit. So I think you're right. I think it absolutely will put a focus on the economy, but it should not be the economy at any cost. And I think people have come too far and our commitments are too serious around climate change and around social and prosperity and shared prosperity. That there's no reason why we can't deliver that in a more sustainable way. And that is our proposition. It should be sustainable. It should be high levels of growth that are sustainable and benefiting those communities, not at the cost of those communities.